This tiny island off the central Queensland coast is known for some of the best coral cover on the Great Barrier Reef. Because you're, you're so far out from everything, which is what it makes it so special. On the surface, it is an oasis. When I'm here, I'm like, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. Like, I feel very, yeah, at home. But under the sea, the state of the coral reveals another story. These researchers are getting ready to dive into the pristine waters on the southern Great Barrier Reef, but they're worried about the extent of coral bleaching they'll see. This is my third time here over the course of this event this year, so I hate to say we're getting numb to it, but we kind of expected it, probably more than when we first came. One Tree Island is a remote research station 100 kilometres off the central Queensland coast. Warmer than average ocean temperatures last summer caused widespread damage. It's estimated more than 50% of the coral has died here. Yeah, it was pretty, uh, I guess, shocking to go back out there and see the amount of coral death that we've had. We've only done two dives, but I'm sure we're going to see more of the same, just a lot of mortality. But there have been some small areas of recovery. One big moment was a Parides balmy that's just right off um, the station here. It's a really big, beautiful type of um, coral that it's huge. It's full of fish. And when we went to that site, I was so nervous because I was like, oh, please, please let that thing be OK. And it was actually, and it still is. So that was one of the, one of the bright spots of this whole thing, I suppose. The team is making 3D maps of this part of the reef to monitor its health. So it's actually quite cool. You just take thousands and thousands of highly overlapping pictures and use some sort of fancy software to stitch them all together. And then we can track the colonies through time and actually see all those colonies, how they, what was their fate through this bleaching event. This tiny island is one of only two parts of the Great Barrier Reef, which is an orange zone, meaning it can only be accessed for education and research purposes and is a no-go zone for tourists. You're, you're so far out from everything, which is what it makes it so special, and that's why it's in a science-only zone, because it's you know hard to get to and therefore low impact, you know, and that's the idea that it's a baseline. When I'm here, I'm like, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. Like, I feel very, yeah, at home in this sort of work. Yeah, it's kind of like that, I guess, like nervous anticipation of kind of knowing, I guess, the outcome that is realistic, which is we know that the reef is experiencing so much disturbance in such a short space of time and kind of, you know, like the analytical science brain being like, the likelihood is that it's not going to look great, but there is that part of you that just hopes like, oh, maybe this time it'll be different. And so I think, yeah, it's kind of, your breath kind of catching as you're going down for that first dive and just hoping that it, yeah, looks maybe better than you're necessarily expecting, yeah.